What's up everybody, my name is Steven and today I wanted to talk about my favorite street photographer, Vivian Mayer. Now I picked up this book a little while ago and I've always known about Vivian Mayer and about her pictures, but I never knew too much about the person. And this book, Vivian Mayer Developed, The Untold Story of the Photographer Nanny by Anne Marks, kind of told the story of how we got to know Vivian Mayer. To give a short synopsis of the book and basically of Vivian Mayer, she was a nanny here in New York and in Chicago, originally from France, and she always worked, but she actually had photography as a hobby. And while she was working or out in the streets, she would take photos. Now, the thing is, she was a little bit of a recluse. She didn't really talk to too many people. She talked to very specific people throughout her lifetime. She also didn't publicize or popularize her own photos. So throughout her whole entire life, she took so many photos, but she always kept them in storage. She always kept them for herself and it never went out. Now, many years later, I believe in the early 2000s, unfortunately she passed away. Now that led her storage units where she kept all of her films to be sold at auction. And luckily for us, the people who bought her unit saw the film and decided to preserve and save it. And since not much was known, what they did was they traced back all the film, all the people in the pictures that she took of, and kind of recreated her story today for us in this book. Now I wanted to touch more on points of why Vivian Mayer is such an important figure in street photography and how can we apply the things that she did today. The first key component about Vivian Mayer is her perspective. Now she had a Rolleiflex camera that had a top-down viewfinder. Now, this is an Olympus OM-2. It's a little bit later than where she was, but it's just to show you that most of the bodies during this time is about this. You look through the viewfinder here on the top, and then you just focus your lens and you take the picture. The limitation here is you have to hold it up to your eyes so you know what you're looking at. And so wherever you have to crouch down or stand up to take the photo, her camera had the top-down viewfinder, meaning you have to look through the top, then adjust your focus, and take a picture. Since it was a top-down viewfinder, it meant that you had to hold it at your chest or even below so that way you can take the photo. And so a lot of her photos were shot at waist level. Now this gave such a creative and interesting perspective of the world around her. So we're not seeing things from her eye, but we're actually seeing things from her waist. Now alongside from the waist level shot, what she shot was what created these stories. One of the main things that she shot were hands. And so at the time, of course, there's no cell phones. There's nothing to keep your hands busy. A lot of people will hold their hands or they would hold their wrists behind their back as they're walking down the street. Now, having a waist level camera and having somebody hold their hands kind of gave an interesting perspective. And from people's hands, you can get a lot of their story. Are their hands soft? Do they have a lot of callus? Where do they have the callus? and do they have a wedding ring? Things like that kind of create a story about a person. And so she had this in mind of when she took a per person's hands, you could basically have a whole entire story about this person just with this one shot. Alongside from the pictures of people's hands, she took a lot of candid photos of workers, of people in the streets, and of the neighborhood that she lived in. So this kind of created different narratives and different stories from every single day of her life. One of the cool parts about Vivian Mayer was that she would actually find Hollywood sets and walk on those sets. Or if some news kind of thing happened nearby, she would actually go to those places and take photos. She was kind of like a journalist and a ninja mixed together because she would appear on these scenes and take photos. But nobody knew that she was there. And on top of that, she didn't really publicize her photos and she didn't like sell these photos she's always kept them so you know was she really there we wouldn't have known until now where we actually see those photos my favorite part about Vivian Mayer is the fact that she wasn't afraid to take self-portraits now personally I am a very self-conscious person I'm not too keen in being in front of the camera like I am now and all that but once I started viewing more of her photos I realized that all these photos are kind of depicting her life in that point. And you could also see how her photography life developed as she grew older. And because of that, it inspired me to take photos of myself every so often, anytime I see reflections. And just like her, I would take reflections in random mirrors through stores, 
uh, random mirrors in my house and things like that just so I can have those photos and later on I can probably look back and see how I have developed as a photographer and as a person. It's always been interesting to me how you can really preserve a little bit of your own history just with the photo. Now how we could apply those kind of things today, of course we have cameras now that have flip out screens and screens that turn around. I think we could experiment more with having the camera at different levels, you know, shooting more by the waist, shooting more at chest level, you know, having different kind of views and experimenting in that can tell a story differently or give us different contexts or just have a really nice and cool perspective compared to just having it at eye height like I have this camera now. Another thing we can focus on is maybe if we're lucky, we can still capture a person's hands. Maybe they're not using their cell phone. Maybe they're holding hands with somebody. They have their hands behind their back and we could still try to capture a small glimpse of their story, just like Vivian Mayer did. And of course, in street photography, 99% of the photos are pretty candid. She did actually pose a couple of people depending on where she was and she would actually pose the kids that she took care of. So maybe from time to time we could still do that, but I think the candidness while getting a little bit more of the background creates a whole entire story on its own and we can get the real story of this person that we're trying to take a photo of. If you guys like this video, don't forget to hit the like button down below. Leave a comment about which photographer I should look into next and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys next time. This thing still works? Oh my God, it works. I didn't even know it worked. I thought this thing was broken the whole time.